All right, on to cardiovagal function. Um, we are very interested in cardiovagal function for a number of reasons. Uh, we know cardiovagal function is impaired early in the autonomic neuropathies, including diabetic and amyloid neuropathies. So it's very sensitive, and the reason for that uh, is, is rather simple. Just like a length-dependent neuropathy starts in nerves that are the longest, so in nerves that supply the foot, so the cardio, the, the, the vagal nerve is uh, the longest nerve, uh, the longest cranial nerve, and so it's early affected in, in uh, uh, nerve disease as well. And it's very sensitive and co contains a lot of parasympathetic fibers that we're interested in studying. And it is also convenient because there's nothing easier than assessing cardiovagal function. You really, all you need is a 3-lead EKG and uh, some form of standardized stimulus, um, and you can derive cardiovagal function. There's a number of ways to do that. Um, the ones that are highlighted here in red are the ones that we do as part of the autonomic reflex screen. Why? Again, it goes back to sensitive, specific, reproducible, and all those other attributes. And so those are the ones I'll be focusing on here. When one looks at the underlying physiology, it actually gets quite complicated. Uh, you can write a book about possible and uh, uh, real actual components and constituents to the response to deep breathing. Uh, it goes back to reflexes such as the herring brewer reflex, the Bainbridge reflex may be involved. There's some component of the bar reflex that has a contribution. There may also be some central neural coupling, and even cardiac stretch reflexes may play a role. While interesting, for practical reasons, all you need to know that taking deep breath in and out results in modulation of the cardiovagal outflow from the nucleus ambiguous, and that results in respiratory sinus arrhythmia. Increase in heart rate when you take a deep breath in, and a decrease in heart rate when you breathe out. And that's what we quantify here. Um, we do think that the lung stretch reflex is actually the major component, but really it, it doesn't matter. You assess cardiovagal function either way. And this is how we do it. Uh, on the top panel, you see beat to beat heart rate. On the bottom panel, respiration. And we look at the best five consecutive responses to f five breaths. So uh, we do a total of eight to 10 breaths and then choose the best five consecutive heart rate responses and quantify those. And we basically look at the difference between the maximum and the minimum heart rate, do that five times and take the average. Uh, why are we doing the best consecutive five? Well, back then that was thought to be the best way of doing it, the most unbiased way of doing it, and all our normative data are derived, derived based on that. And so we are stuck with that now. Uh, maybe taking the, the highest five would have been just as good, but this is, this is what, we, what we have normative values on, and so that's what we're using. And again, there's a number of factors other than disease that can affect heart rate responses to deep breathing. Uh, age clearly an uh, important variable. Uh, posture is important. Uh, your heart rate responses are clearly diminished when you uh, obtain them in a sta standing position. So have your subjects in a standardized position, and the way our normative data are derived is supine, so we all have them lying supine when we do the test. Um, the rate of breathing plays a role. We have compromised on six breaths, five seconds in, five seconds out. Um, that seems to give the, the maximum heart rate response for the majority of people. The depth of breath is very, very important. If patients do not take a maximal breath in and out, you have spuriously low responses. It's very important. Uh, there's good studies that, that support that. Even 80% is not good enough, 100% effort. Um, and again, medications. Again, there's normative values. Um, you clearly can see the age effect here. Uh, gender does not really seem to play a significant role in heart rate responses to deep breathing. And uh, the values are listed here and they are published. Here an example of a normal heart rate response, heart rate in red on top, and a blunted, virtually absent heart rate response to deep breathing on the bottom in a patient with diabetic autonomic neuropathy. Thank you.